cool. All right. Well, welcome everyone. Um, uh, I'm just going to dive straight into it. So, uh, welcome new members, first of all. Uh, RJ, congratulations for um, becoming a partner. Really, really excited to work with you, man. Uh, and everyone else as well. Um, Kiri, new member, great to have you here. And yeah, thank you. Just thank you everyone for joining me tonight. So basically, I, I'm just going to go through my evening routine. And I think this is a really, really important step. You don't have to use mine, but if you have some kind of evening routine where you do your markups uh, the night before and kind of think about what's going to happen the next day. Uh, so I just click... Uh, of course you have to use mine and screen uh, so let me change windows hold on okay and can you see this evening routine Okay, can everyone see this? Uh, so I'm just gonna go through it and we'll do it all from scratch. And I'm, I'm gonna load it up just on my other computer so I can see it while uh, I'm doing the markups on TradingView. So just bear with me two seconds. Uh, can I ask, um, does everyone here have like an evening routine that they do the night before trading or is it a case of diving straight in uh like on the day um just just in general yeah uh, i'm the same and i find um having an evening routine having um all your markups prepared in advance is really valuable um, so I'm just gonna pull up mine. Hold on, and it's in the uh, start here tab. Okay, so first one: do higher time uh, time frame markups, supply and demand, FBGs for GU on your clean chart, and intraday chart. Okay, so I've explained before that I've got um, two charts. One is like a, a higher time frame supply and demand. The uh, I use traditional su supply and demand methodology to uh, do. I keep that clean. I don't put any annotations on it. Uh, so I post that uh, the night before on evening analysis. So if you want to use my zones, that's fine. Um, I do have to go in more depth in the course on how I draw those zones. Um, so bear with me on that. I'm going to do another... Um, like module on it I think um, and then our intraday chart is I use trading view personally but you're welcome to use whatever you want of course uh, so that's what I'm gonna do I'm just gonna start I'm just gonna switch screen to trading view and can you see this absolute mess oh uh, so this is like this is you know um if i was to start the day trading with uh like all my annotations and markups you know this is this is untradeable what is the, this is a total mess so what we do right click uh remove everything just get rid of it all and we have a nice clean chart and uh, we'll put it on four hour. Okay. So I, I use split screen. In general, my left screen is like my trading screen. And my right split screen is like uh, my slightly a higher time frame, higher picture. So it tends to be uh, M15 on this chart. And just just my own personal preference. Uh, swing high and low uh, indicator P 
pivot indicator and FVG indicator on, on this split screen. And on this side, I only use um, FVG, um, Nephew Sam. So that, that's a fair value gap, that's just a gap in price. Um, you can see we touched it there and then dipped. So very interesting. We um always find like at the end of the week, GU or any pair will will settle in some kind of interesting like turning point. And I notice we're on the monthly pivot point, I believe this is. So if you put the daily chart on and you have a pivot indicator on, we're on the monthly pivot exactly to the pip. Well, not to the pip, but, you know, basically there. So uh, I include monthly pivots on my chart. So I'm just going to stick them on now while I, uh, while I have them up. This looks kind of weird to me. Oh, I think it's because the price is on there. Okay, never mind. Okay. Now you can make templates on TradingView. Is everyone aware of templates? I don't use them personally, but for the sake of demonstration, I think we should just use them. Um, Eleven. And save as monthly pivot. Save. Done. And got monthly. Ask, do people use, do you guys use pivot points at all? Like, uh, is that a thing you've used in, in the past? Yeah. I, uh, I love them personally. I think the, well, they're basically, it's, no, it's an old pit trading uh, technique to find out where price is uh, relative to the previous week or previous month. Uh, and it gives you a broad indication if price is bullish or bearish, depending on if price closes above or below the pivot point. Uh, um, and people do trade them. <coughs> and I, I include them in my chart because I find they are magnetic levels, especially the uh, daily pivot is an extreme, extremely important level. Let's stick these on for now. So yeah, we close to right on the uh, month, uh, monthly pivot point. So we can start with the four hour chart. And if you go into evening analysis, you'll see my supply and demand zones. Uh, you're welcome to use these. These are like, what I find like the strongest institutional supply and demand zones. Um, and they are zones that have broken e like an opposing zone. Like, uh, so if I have a supply zone, it's broken a demand zone. Uh, not necessarily like horizontal structure, although we do use that intraday. Um, what I'm really looking at is it's very strong zones that have broken other zones. Uh, I learned that from White Oak. So H4. I believe we have H4 supply. 
Dollars, Pound US Dollar. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Just the Lego. This guy. On the stage for supply. So we had a we had a demand there. Um or was it? Yeah. Anyway. So coordinates. So I've marked these up in my clean chart previously, and I, I keep them updated uh, constantly, pretty much. And you don't have to follow my methods; it's just the way I do it. So. We do have more uh, supply up here, so we'll just include them. And they actually come from back here. Is everyone with me so far? So each for supply. I mean, supply and demand is at the heart of what I do, so getting the zones right is very important. So you can see there was a drive up. Oh, that's a shit, I didn't mean to do that. So you can see, this This was a uh, supply that broke uh, a demand here, I believe. So it became a strong supply zone. Uh, big leg out, tested, tested again, so it's now weak. I'm just gonna put a text and say it's like weak supply because it's been uh, it's been tested twice now, so it's not like a a fresh zone. Okay, it's pretty much been consumed nearly, and there was supply up here as well. Extend right at coordinates. Sorry, that was the wrong one. I d does anyone know what this visibility thing is? I, d I don't know what it is. Let's just cancel. I, I, I actually don't know what that field does. Uh, That, um, that may be it. Okay, that was supply. The Brook structure. Uh, we'll just... uh, H4 supply, so what we got? That's basically uh, all of our relevant H4 zones now. This is the most interesting one. Now while we're here, um, 
there I, I believe there's a trend line on H4 as well, like a major trend line. We may as well stick it on. It goes back quite quite a long way. Now I don't trade off these, it's just um you know it's often there's uh price manipulation at trend lines. So it's around Um, yeah, it was, you can see it was false breakout here and then back down, you know, bringing in breakout traders, hit supply, straight back down. So you can use you can use these uh, trend lines to your advantage, okay? Because false breakouts are common. So let's say you see that and you're going into kind of a fresh supply zone. You know, and then you go in and look at your five minute price action or whatever one minute price action. Um, you know, the thing that sticks out to me, I believe that was a previous day's high. All right? Wiped straight down. That was a trade we took. Uh, very simple, okay. You know, you gotta know your zone. We've got a clue here. We're we're breaking out of a trend line. We're bringing in a, um, breakout traders. Huge clue in supply. Wipe of a, a previous daily high. Key level. Uh, that was a trade we took. I can't remember if we did it live or or what we did it, but that was actually we, we were doing this in copy trade as well, I think uh, I, This was the jolts remember jolts swept his way up here and it almost took us to 1.5 and Then took us down so we were in this with the copy trade, but anyway, that's our h4 zones done is that no? This one was uh, first thing in the morning. Yeah, yeah, I, mean, I caught it. And, um, but yeah, if you have your zone, like you've got like nice basing here, perfect supply zone basing, lag out, break a structure, test to make sure it's actually a supply zone. Uh, that that is a beautiful trade, and that's just using pure supply and demand. Um, so we've got our pivot, like monthly pivot points. At this point, we haven't started the week, so we don't do weekly pivot points, okay? Uh, or the daily ones. So we'll move over to H H one. Actually, before we, before we do that, um, if you can see my screen here on the daily, we have this big fair value gap. And price seems to be heading towards it, so this is significant. So I'm gonna mark this up. I'm gonna mark it up uh, as a daily zone. Uh, what do you mean? Mm, I would say I I I put fair value gaps like uh, in a paler shade like this. Um. Uh, my charts do get cluttered and that is uh, a criticism that I get but yeah you could leave it off if it was irrelevant but we can see this is clearly relevant because it's way back down and also this is a uh, we'll see later when we go into the volume that this monthly pivot point is actually a significant uh, support uh, so template actually we're gonna have text on this we'll have like some light text uh, H, well, this is daily FVG. So, just just eyeballing this, there's a very high chance we're gonna fill this gap uh, next week. So I'm gonna note that down, just pen and paper. Uh, daily FVG, and that gives us. I'm gonna make two columns, a bear and bull. I'm literally just writing this down. So it's a daily fair value gap, but um, it also extends down here on H4, but I'll just leave it as the daily one for now. Um, so that's our H4 
you can see how, how important these gaps are. So, you know, big leg down fills the gap precisely down and they act as support and resistance. So very important to have these marked out. Um, even though this one's kind of mitigated, we'll still include it. H4. Save us. Okay, good stuff. We also got one down here. Let's, let's mark it up anyway. I don't know, yeah, I've got my favorite spar here. I don't know why it's, is this why? I don't know, what's happening here? This, H4. Ah, there we go, sorry. I've actually never used the templates before, so this is a bit of an experiment for me. And, uh, I actually just mark up all manually because I'm, I'm I'm really against like things being done automatically, because it, it is it is a time saver. I'm gonna admit, um, but I would never trust. Let's see. I'm gonna load up a chart just to show you um, the indicators that you get. Um, gee, lower time frame zones. So uh, I was experiment and see if there's like an indicator right there. Well, you know how I have my, my clean higher time frame chart. I uh, also have a clean lower time frame chart, but I don't have time to like constantly update it. So I tried out this um, indicator, which is supposed to be good, like it was recommended to me, but it's it's a piece of shit. Um, and it's, and I, anyway, I really do not recommend using this because, you know, what, why is this a supply zone? I, I guess it broke the structure, maybe. Um, but some of the zones just make no sense to me. Um, I think it's like, you know, how people teach order blocks and it's like, they, they, it looks like order blocks that don't break structure, so we don't do that. We use supply and demand that needs a break of significant um, opposing zone. Okay, intra intra intraday we can be a bit more lax and say, okay, 50, 50 minute. You know, try let's try and find a zone like. Would we call that a zone? Um, I guess that's structure. So you could, eh, you know, you, you could argue that's a zone, for example. You know, you can do that in intraday. Uh, just be careful with it. In, in, indeed, yeah. Um, you're studying white oak, aren't you? Love it. I uh, what what? Uh, I've started. I mean, I've did what I did white oak white oaks uh, course before, and I've, you know, I I took what I needed from it, and uh, I I found it extremely useful for. Uh, he's the master of supply and demand. Forget about everyone else. He is like the for the COT report and all that. Uh, bloody, bloody brilliant. Anyway, but just to keep this short, let's go to H one. I. Mm. Which one are you thinking? This guy. This guy.
this mm, yeah I think you could argue that definitely now I didn't have it yeah I understand what you're saying uh, translate Yeah, good point. Like a break of structure. Who said that? Raymond's very good. Alright. Uh, yeah, I did not have that one marked out. Uh, let's see why. Yeah, I think because it didn't break a uh, supply zone, I don't have a supply zone. Um, here, so I didn't mark that as a, a demand, but yeah, you're quite right. Anyway, H1, get more granular here. Um, there's a definite trend line on H1 here. Interesting. Trend lines, nah, I never trade trend line bounces, okay. Anything that uh, works sometimes is, is not good for me, like, uh, and trend lines, they're manipulated on GU constantly, so that's why I draw them, because you can expect manipulation around them, so for example, let's say, we can start, you know, like, developing scenarios now. Say, uh, let's say we're expecting this FVG to be filled and price makes a drive up here. You know, we could think about shorting down to there, right? Wow, you know, 275 pips. Just for example, you know, that's something to keep in mind. So that's, you know, bull case. Uh, Bull cases, I'm going to say break of trend line in H1. I'll keep that up just now, just to keep it clean. Um, and this is... I don't know where my favourite bar is going. Oh, there it is. Missed it. <laughs> All right, so we have. It's a bit big, isn't it? Yeah. I'm just going to make sure it lines up with the coordinates. Save as. Sorry, this is boring people to death, but this is just, this is what I do every night. And uh, I make sure I start from scratch. Uh, and believe me, like doing this work will pay dividends. A lot of it is like, you know, you formulate an idea and then you sleep on it. Um, and you're starting, it's really starting to develop a, a picture now of what could happen. Um, other H1 supplies, I'm just referring to my chart. Uh, I've only got one more that I really see. That we, tr we actually traded off this one, and not a lot of people had this um, H1 supply marked. So it's up at 13665. Mm -hmm. 
so let me try, let me try to find this. Fifth of October. So this one. Sorry, I'm kind of going brain dead here. I've been taking calls all day, literally, and I'm dead. Uh, I think it was this one. That's this one I'm talking about. This was missed by a lot of people. Um, but it, this was a demand zone, okay? It was, uh, if you check my chart, I've, I've ghosted it, uh, I'm not gonna put it on this chart, but this was a demand and this was supply that broke demand. And uh, we actually traded it off of this, but not many people had it as a zone. So, um, it's kind of a hidden zone. It's not a very obvious one. And demand. Twenty eighth September is kind of here. This is the one, that, yeah, this is the one, um, I think you were talking about Raymond, there was two, two supply zones here. Sorry, uh, two demand zones, what am I talking about? I'm sorry if I'm boring everyone to death. It's just the way it is. This is what uh, trading uh, and trading to me is all about prep work. Uh, and it's like, you know, if you don't do this prep work, it's like going into battle without like sharpening your your blade or loading your gun. You know, you just go in half cocked. something wrong there. That's not as clearly not right. Oh, that's better. It's looking a lot better. Now we can look at uh, H1 FVGs as well. Yeah, this fresh one. 
price is likely going to be attracted here. Uh, what I'm really seeing is a drive up. Possibly to one of these areas tomorrow. We'll have to look at Dixie. Uh, we're going to do the same for Dixie, so... Um, what are we calling this again? Style... Template... Uh, text. So are, are are we seeing anything else in the charts? I like to um, look out for visual support and resistance. Uh, just the obvious ones. Uh, I think to me this looks like you know a resistance line. So like well uh. At what we call an SBR. Anyone heard that term before? SBR. As, as support becomes resistance. Um, so we'll make it. We could make it a zone or a line. Uh, dash line. Let's make it thick. Um, support and resistance is, uh, is, is usually not an exact level. Uh, we know this is on like 80 or 75 or 80, that kind of zone. Did I spell resistance right? Yeah. <laughs> That's... Well, I think if we go back in time, right, we're, we're probably going to know it as, we might have to go daily. Look, it's been tapped. So it, it's, a significant, it's a significant level, basically. So you should be marking these up. Um, do your daily and your four hour chart and just do, just do them visually, okay? And then we can get into the volume ones. Um, I'm not gonna mark that up. It, it looks like resistance that's been broken that might re be retested, but let's just, uh, what's going on here? That's not spelled right. No, it's fine. Okay. I think we're all good. Now we need to look at um, significant highs and lows. Um, M15 swing high. Well, is it really? Okay. I'm not gonna mark that. I don't think that's very significant. It doesn't seem like it. Yeah. I think we can do this in the morning with the session highs and lows, but uh, this, you know, you could call that a significant high. Uh, 
That would be Brighty. That Brighty's high. It's going to be a target. getting into key level stuff now. Uh, so yeah, let's just do the key levels. Just get them in. Friday high, Friday low. This looks like some kind of support. Friday close, I guess we can now forget about that for now. Uh, how about we just go back in time and look at Thursday? This is th Thursday's high. Everyone understand like what uh, key levels are in the context of what we do. Good enough for now, I think. Um, Wednesday high. I'm just looking for the obvious, like, liquidity points. I've really got my eyes on Friday high at the moment. I think, you know, there's going to be some movement. I think, you know, this FVG is a sitting duck. To me, this is going to be filled this week, for sure. And I also believe this trend line will be broken. And we're either going to run into... I mean, if we run into this supply, let's see. Let's see we run. Fill that FVG run supply. broken trend line um, you know would this be valid I suppose we've got like New York high that is a key level It's not like a significant high though, would you say? It's not really like a swing high, but it's still a key level to me. Or the other scenario is we break Friday's high, hit this uh, untested supply, head down, something like that. Uh, you know, just starting to develop a picture of what could happen. I'm gonna leave this arrow here for now, because I think this is a, a very likely scenario, but uh, it could. Let's watch this whole area. Just in terms of liquidity analysis, okay, you're gonna have a lot of stop losses. People uh, trading short, because we are in uh, H1 downtrend, I believe. 
Yeah, we are. H1, H4 are both making uh, lower lows, lower highs. So, although we're trending, we may make a sweep up. Some kind of sweep up tomorrow is what I'm expecting. And then down. Uh, we're just going to have to keep our wits about us to just see. It could be just that here. Um, but we can look at Dixie in a bit more granular detail. Now I'm just trying to see if there's anything I've missed. I mean, M15 FVGs? Yeah. It starts to clutter the chart, but I consider those trading levels too. I'll make these very pale so they don't like, you know clutter up the chart. Uh, template, save as M15, FVG. Got a little one here as well. Yeah. Interesting one. And has anyone got any like feelings just based on the the levels we've marked? What could happen? I mean, what have we got here? Lows. Significant low. Okay. Very, very significant low. And has this one been broken? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. This is uh, Friday's London Low. Mm -hmm. Monthly pivot is an odd one. Like, I don't, I, you know, I, monthly pivots, I would, I used to not even mark them up. Like, I used to just use da daily pivots. Uh, we can't put weekly pivots on yet because the week hasn't started. Um, uh, we can't mark them up until tomorrow, but I see Friday's London low and an FVG here. I'm seeing the New York high and Friday's high. Uh, we're going to see some movement here, I think. Now we could go for Friday's low, fill here, and then go up. I, I don't know. We'll see. I think we have to look at Dixie to get a bit more granular here, but at the moment... That's all I see. Uh, very significant low here. Okay, 29th September London low. I think it's time to get into Dixie. That's basically it. I mean, we, um, this has just got like the bare bones for tomorrow. Um, this idea may change. Uh, let's say we gap up and like, you know, Asia is like flying up here or something. Obviously, this case is off. Um, let's look at the DXY. Oh, you know, one thing we should do first is, um, volume can anyone see is it still trading view you can see so can everyone with like mt4 open their uh, volume charts I'm just going to show mine for a minute can you see that so I've got weekly marked out, and I'm going to mark out these uh, points of control. Just the points of control at the moment. And if you see any, I'm also going to go daily 15. And look at daily points of control that are near the price. So look at that. That's a uh, support. 
That's a clear support. I'm just going to mark this right now on the chart. 10647. High volume support. Is it? Uh, sorry. Um, just can everyone just pull up their volume charts, uh, and I'll I'll just keep marking on trading view. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull up volume on my market profile on another terminal. Uh, just look at weekly first and you can look in uh, M30 or H1 or whatever makes you happy uh, I mark up the ones that are that looks that look significant and that look like they might be I mean this uh, I'm just seeing this Depok Ha, um, has acted as a key level and prices reacted off it so that's what this is, I'm going to mark it up I'm going to switch over to trading view stream um, hold on let's change windows Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh the they can either be supply and demand zones or just general structure, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Precisely. So which one was I looking at? Uh daily. Oh, I've got daily. Hold on. Daily. Ten, uh, and fifteen. So yeah, I'm looking at. I can't see the date on that. Like the way my MT four set up, I can't see the date. It's because of the resolution on my laptop that I can't see the date of this so it's, it's 29th of September Deepak um, style okay interesting um, yeah, I'm just going to go back to my evening routine so I'm going to tick these off just to make sure I've done them so okay do higher time frame markups supply and demand F and G for GU in your intraday chart include monthly and yearly pivot points done do higher time frame markups for Dixie um Okay, like what? Well, I have it in the order to do the volume stuff after, so we'll just do Dixie. And this this is the support that saved my bacon basically. Um, the other day when I was copy trading, I got into a bit of trouble, and I I used this support as confluence for. Um, what sweep was it? I can't even remember. This guy, right? This this uh, lined up here, so it, it gave me confidence. I basically was in a bit of trouble and a bit of drawdown, so I added positions here, and uh, rolled it down, you know, uh, and got out of trouble. But uh, fuck me, like, like 
I, I, I was running the copy trading in a slightly different style. It was a lot more discretionary, uh, rather than like discretionary systematic, which is what I preach. So, it, you know, it was my first week test that ended in profit, but uh, the standard deviation, the the sharp, is really not up to par. So we need to improve that for next week. But it's you know that's what tests are for. So clean Dixie chart. And we just go through the exact same exercise. Don't know what these blue lines are. So that's one week. So daily gives us our monthly pivot points. Yeah, I could just use the indicator. I just don't like it uh, on the main screen for some reason. It's just like personal preference. You could easily just use the uh, indicator. I don't know. I just don't like... I prefer to draw it myself. I don't know why. It's just like personal preference. But you could usually easily just stick the indicator mm -hmm. on if you like. It's not daily, it's monthly. As you can see, Dixie is bullish. Um, after reacting up to this clear support. You can see that was the zone. Uh, if you go back in time, it's probably uh, this is actually. I'm just calling this structure for now. Um, so it's that's RBS resistance becomes support, and we can still use this for trading. It's fine. I know I know we're supply and demand traders, but we have to be aware of structural levels as well. Of course. They're not irrelevant. Just because you're a supply and demand trader doesn't mean you can't trade support and resistance. It's not like the, the two can sit together fine. Uh, so Dixie zones. I hope you're still with me. I mean, this is kind of boring, but it's just the way it is. <laughs> Uh, we'll start with H4. Now, trends line. Does someone leave or someone join? We've got, we've got three, six, we've got nine people, it's okay. I know it's getting late, it's like 9.30. We should all be in bed by now. So H4 trend line, we'll do this quickly. Um, one thing we have to be very aware of uh, we're in we weekly weekly demands very good basing okay the more basing the more accumulates the more of a powerful zone it is Uh, H or f well, it's not really text.
does everyone um, have this as a weekly sub uh, demand zone or no? Because it broke, uh, it broke a weekly de demand. If you check my chart, uh, you can see it, br it broke a demand from. Wait for it. Oh god, it was like back in a. You know, it was like twenty years ago or something. But anyway, it broke structure, so coordinates. So that's weekly demand. And it's, it, it, it pinned off it almost perfectly. Very hard to draw exact, you know, like some people include all the wicks. You could say, you know, like it's maybe more like this. But you can see this hammer candle. Um, I'm not totally convinced this is going to just drive up cleanly. It could well do that. Um, I, my instinct, like my trader instinct, to, I, I think we're going to come down and retest, but I don't know. Let's see the trend lines of that. Wednesday uh, 28th, hi. Highs and lows are very important. It's like the, the, the bedrock of of how I trade personally. What the fuck is that? Uh Tuesday fourth of October low. Maybe make this a bit, a bit paler in color. Okay, uh, uh, H4 demand. We'll just draw the uh, the closest ones for now. Uh, I know it's basically supplies up here, demands down here. Interesting. So, why is this demand that was uh, supply here, uh, and I broke it? And regards to fuck, what happened there? But it turned into higher. Layer. Is anyone doing markups with me, or are you just kind of watching for? Uh, like info. Ah, oh, perfect. Uh, this this work that we're doing um, 
it's so so like if I don't do the evening analysis, um, I I feel I can't trade properly in the morning because uh, I have I have to like rush everything. I start to feel stress. Um, and I can't trade. Well, I can I can trade if I'm really quick, but if you know, even if I'm up at five a.m. and I've not got all my zones marked out, or it's just a bloody mess from, um, you know, previous markups, then I find it very hard to trade. Which for supply, okay. No, it's a little gap there. So what else? Uh, Friday, Friday London high. Interesting. Okay, people trading short. A lot of stop losses here. We can call that well Friday. We'll call it Friday London high, and it's equal highs too. I cannot spell. Now, uh, what we're we seeing here, like equal highs, pierce above. You know, could we? Could we call this a potential zone? Flag out, break. Is that a swing low? Hold on. Yeah. I mean, it's a swing low. So, I think we can potentially call that a zone. I'm gonna make it pale, I'm not too sure. Color. Opacity. It's not changing. I'm gonna call it weak because it didn't break an opposing um, zone. Oh, fuck, I'm on the text this way. What do you think, guys? Is that a zone? Any thoughts? Yay or nay for this. Anyone? Could we have uh, that kind of scenario? Um, that looks like a possible scenario to me. It may not reach that high. Um... I noticed that my FEG indicator isn't on here. Um, fuck off. What is going on? What is this? Well, oh no, what have I done? What have I done? What happened there? What did I do? Potential scenario. Um, it doesn't even need to reach.
This looks like to me something's gonna happen. Wait, is there any more? We've also got these spare value gaps. <sighs> Should have templated that. Are you sure? Uh, save uh, save. Uh, what were we thinking? A lot going on here. It's getting quite busy. I understand that. But it has to be done. I'm seeing that as a raid above equal highs. And. Yeah. It's a question of watching the price action. Let's go through the one hour. having all these markups ready for tomorrow is we're gonna slay we're gonna absolutely slay and you can see a little fair valley gap it's just coming down to fill it You know, might fail. I go up here. What do we see? Is that a trend line? Absolutely. Hmm. Kind of like that, maybe. Okay, H one uh, supply and demand now. Start. We're starting to develop a picture. I'm starting to kind of to see what's going to happen tomorrow. Uh, I remember, it's a U.S. bank holiday, so that will will affect volumes. Um, so Dixie H one supply and demand. Let's see. Sixth uh, of October. I have one. Yeah. Let's do this one. Yeah. Which one demand? Cresto. Uh, it's got a little bit of plastic on there. Save as each one demand. Very interesting.
Okay. And... I'll just do the local ones for now. So I mean, there are there are loads of supply and demand zones that uh, I've marked out. Um, next one's yeah, believe. Uh, I'm gonna do more of a tutorial on how I approach higher time frame supply and demand because I haven't, I haven't really covered it in great de detail. Um, I thought because I learned supply and demand from White Oak and I don't want to like plagiarize his material because I know he's not, he's quite litigious, what's the word? Uh, litigious? Is that word? Litigious? He litigates a lot. Play H1 demand coordinates three five five four. Okay, perfect. I am there's one down here. This was a hidden one, but I believe I believe it helped me with the trade. So we're going back to twentieth September. Um hold on. Yeah, twenty September Tuesday. I guess it kind of aligns with the support. Is that right? Yeah. So there was there was demand above those equal highs, basically. Sorry, uh, supply above these equal highs. We don't need to mark that. Out. Why is the text not appearing? Or have I done something wrong? Are people still with me or uh, is everyone falling asleep? <laughs> Sorry, is that the most exciting thing in the world, doing markups? Some some's there. I heard I heard a little rummage. Who is it? Raymond's still there. Brilliant. Uh, London High, twenty ninth September. I mean, this is just what you need to do to be successful unfortunately there is a lot of like prep work and what were we thinking on the one hour we have liquidity up here we have liquidity up here how far could it go I mean Web bounce stuff weekly uh, demand. Difficult to tell right now, but we'll see tomorrow. Overnight price action is going to guide us on this one. 
Um, what do you think, guys? Like, what's the what's the situation? Let's let's say this was. You know, a reaction of um, demand, and we're gonna go bullish. Uh, we're gonna head for this high, or it's just taking this London high. We're gonna have to watch for compression, and see if it wants to like mitigate this demand or retest. I mean, we've got major support here. Quite often, these are retested, so we might create some like equal lows. That's quite possible and quite likely, in my opinion. Come down for a retest. Uh, another scenario is uh, we just go like bullish straight up here. We're gonna just have to watch and judge the price action on the day. Um, my 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 money's on a retest down here. Yeah. Anyway, so let's say let's say Dixie does a small drive up to this supply. That means GU going down, taking Friday's low. If it goes down, and then GU could go up to this zone. So my target. I'm uh, I'm expecting bear than bull tomorrow. Um, we'll see what the overnight price action says. But um, you know, let's see what Asia does. But I've got my sights on Friday's high. I'm just like, that's what I'm gunning for. Friday's New York high also. Because uh, we're in a downtrend here, and um, some kind of sweep is very likely. Um, before going down here, which is this uh, the ultimate aim, I think is to get to this daily fair value gap. I think that's where we're headed. Bullish, bull uh, sorry, bearish, bearish, bearish. Hesitation on the pivot point, possibly some raid so on liquidity, and then down here. I think we're gonna head possibly down here. Um, that's predicated on Dixie continuing its huge parabolic bull run, which we can see. I don't know if we go into daily. We're still uh, in a clear uptrend. Uh, there's nothing to say we've topped out here. Could have. Um, but Dixie, I've got my next weekly supply, like, quite... I'm gonna, I'm gonna draw it, just to show. We're going back to... 1st of April, 02. I believe it was this candle. That's my next weekly supply. Believe it or not. Well, you know, we create this big leg out from here. Um, indecision candle leg out. And it was uh, a break of this uh, demand. Also, triple top. Is there liquidity up here? Let's mark it up anyway. July 01 high. I think we could be headed up there.
What do you think? Or is it as Dixie had its day? Do you think uh, we're gonna see a reversal? I mean, there's no real signs of reversal. I mean, the Fed are still hiking rates, right? Um, what I th what we could do is create a big double top here. Um, create some kind of um, range. You know, we could head up to this supply, take out that London high, and create a kind of double top, double bottom. This could be a huge accumulation. Uh, and this this could uh, turn into a range of some of some kind. You know, fill the daily FVG, take out this high. Tough one, I think. Yeah. I'm anticipating some ranging behavior, but I don't know yet. We'll have to see the overnight price action and make a plan in the morning. Does anyone um anyone have a feel for this? Anyone got some ideas? I do. I you know what? Do do you want to just like anyone just fire questions at me and um just just about what we're doing here? Uh, I know a lot of you are new, and this may seem like uh, completely alien the way I do markups and and stuff. Uh, but I'm, I'm mainly interested in supply and demand, FEGs, significant highs and lows, session highs and lows. And we'll do that. We'll do the session highs and lows tomorrow. Uh, yeah. Any questions? Anyone? Ziva, you're you're brand new. Let's let's hear. For, let's uh, introduce yourself. Tell tell us about yourself. Tell tell us why you left TVT. Or if you're if you're listening. No. <laughs> okay. Okay. And anyone else got any questions? Lynn. Kiri. Uh, Alright. Let's go to three, six, uh, seven, people, seven people made it to the end. That's pretty good. So, uh, yeah, that's that's basically it. Um, if there's any questions, let me know right now or we can discuss it another time. But that's essentially the evening routine. Um, normally, I would maybe not delete everything. And start from scratch but just for the sake of demonstration I thought I would do that and you know this gives me a very clear picture for tomorrow um, I, I see this as a potential target for the week uh, but some kind of sweep up here would be very good Friday's high possibly uh, we keep an eye on Dixie see if it, um, it's happy just to yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah, we'll do that. In a... Yeah, um, we're uh, we're looking at zones that break other zones, basically. Uh, but intraday, yeah, you can do. Uh, I mean, an order block. Uh, it's an IC ICTE term. Okay, so let's say we've got a 15 minute chart. And we have a swing. According to ICT, the order block would have to be in here. So that, uh, you know, this would be, this would be your OB. It would have to be in the, the uh, dis discount zone. Um, Let's see if there's an H1. That would, pro that would probably be your order block. Um, yeah, we we can keep that there because uh, you know fib fibs are useful for uh, determining if we're buying at a premium or a discount. Um, we'll keep we'll keep that fib there for now. 
and let's see let's see what happens tomorrow uh, with Dixie um one hour fair value gap where this guy hold on Um, I'm, I'm sorry, what price? Yeah, what? 725. Uh, if that is a demand zone. Yeah, and the fair value gift above it. Yeah. Uh, I've got that as a uh, demand, so yeah, that would be that would be classed as an order block in ICT because it's in this uh, area uh, and it's a prime target. So we could see uh, a raid on Friday's London low and this H1 demand. Uh, you know, like a raid below this, like it could move up down here to this, or you know what this is an order block essentially. Um, yeah, uh, we could see a move down here and then boom, up. That'd be a good, this is a good one. Yeah, uh, anticipated, yeah, possibly, you know, this is, uh, it's losing momentum, it seems to me. Let's see, you know what, for the sake of it, let's pull up some MACD. Sorry. But um, you can see this is losing momentum, okay? You know, or if you want to get your other oscillators, what's your what's your, what's your favorite oscillator? RSI. I always used MACD, but RSI same same deal, same oscillator. What we see is yeah, divergence. Um, I see this losing momentum. We might see a final burst. Could see a final burst, and then I move down here. Um, yeah, let's keep an eye on that. Uh, I'm gonna keep the RSI up. Why not? Uh, I, I I don't like oscillators. Um, it's just more noise to me. Um, but I do I do kind of like divergence. But we have an uptrend, and yeah, but. Uh, a bit of a divergence here so you know I doubt it's just gonna come down here I think I might do like a little final burst or something into this supply I'm, I'm looking at this I'm looking at the supply and then then down so let's say GU will go down then up down then up you know, we're looking for maybe a break of Friday's low. Let's say we make an Asia range. And it, it will maybe drop, you know, Friday's London low and then up. Something like that. This is what I have in mind. Okay, so we'll see you overnight. We've got all our markups. Uh, we'll get a lot more granular in the morning. Um, any other questions? Oh, um, what we have to do is volume work as well. Some very we'll just do it really quickly, okay? Uh, weekly Okay. Put on M three. Um, we should put last week's point of control on.
which is one one uh, one point one three two eight four. And I see we're kind of moving out of the valley area. 1.11. One, one, hold on, I'm just going to mark it the valley area high and low. This is uh, for a range. Let's say, let's say we're anticipating a range. Okay. If we're moving out of the valley area, then it's going to be attracted back in. So. Uh, one point one four six three. Can't fucking type. Last week's well. It's where it starts to get a bit messy on my charts, but hey, I think my charts are probably a lot messier than uh, a lot of people's, but it's the it's just the way I trade. Sorry. And we had a lot of like uh, significant volume strikes. So I'm gonna maybe mark out one or two of these like high volume notes. Um, by high volume note, I mean like you know nearly nearly point of control kind of thing. We'll, we'll just do one of them now. One one point one two five six nine. That corresponds with supply, okay? I'm just gonna call it an HVN. So likely this is a target. This kinda might get something like that. Uh we can look at previous weeks as well. Uh, it, but yeah, you know, there's a big volume void, but it's below price. If you look at weekly, last week, uh, there's this fair value gap, right? So we could be going into fill that, I think. Um, and then last week's point of control is down at, sorry, the week before point of control is 1.107729. Where'd it go? Did I type? No, yeah, I think I typed it wrong. Undo. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, a lot of volume down there. So, what what do you think, guys? For a plan? Up here and then boom, down or down first? A, a, a lot of things to consider. I think Dixie is going to um, make a move down or, or it might kind of whimper up and make kind of equal highs and then go down. 
this demand and support and retest this. We just have to watch the price action. Um, yeah, that, I think that's it. We've done most of the stuff. And then tomorrow we can just mark out our session highs and lows and things. Um, and yeah, you could probably use indicators to do all this shit, but I love doing it manually because you start to get a feel for where everything is and what are the potential moves tomorrow. So yeah, um, I'll see you all tomorrow. I think we have a like Frankfurt catch up. It's now like quarter past t uh, 10, so time for bed I think and we'll get up uh, in seven hours time and hit the markets. So yeah, whoever's still with me who managed to join this very exciting webinar, uh, thank you for listening. And I'll stick it up on Podia. Um, just generally, that's my evening routine. And it's normally a lot quicker because um, I'll just go and clean up what I put down before. Um, I don't like this RSI. But we'll just leave it there for now. Yeah, you can use fibs if you want. I mean, I tend not to use them. But what's, what's the main swing here? Where would you draw a fib? Like here to here? No, it doesn't really mean anything, does it? Huh. How about this? All time low? Well, how about that? Fibonacci magic. And then down to the uh, halfway point. Boom. That's where we're going. <laughs> what do you think? Alright, well, we'll see tomorrow. I, 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 you know, I'll, I'll leave that fit there just for fun. Interesting. A lot of confluence and uh, monthly pivot point. Uh, we've got our uh, Deepak, we've got our Fibonacci, uh, so it's interesting that we landed there. Uh, so a, a long and then a, a sell is, is my kind of broad plan for tomorrow. So yeah, we'll see what Asia does, it might just do it. You know what Asia's going to do? It's just going to do that and go down and you know, all this work is